All right, guys, I look gross and stuff, ignore that. So, let's get into it. Let's look at a 50-year-old patient that has been declared terminally ill. They are told that they only have six months to live if they do not get a specific surgery. Now, this surgery will not decrease the patient's life, but it will allow them to live a little bit longer. Even though the surgery can assist them, it's expensive and the insurance company will not pay for it. So, this patient can live in pain for the next few months, or they can decide to die. Today, I want you guys to understand that although a physician-assisted suicide can look dangerous and even impulsive, there is a lot that goes into it. Overall, there is a large process that goes into making the decision, and we can try to urge this law to go in effect in every state. Now, many of you may not know a terminally ill person, but that should not matter. Just think of yourselves in 40 years, your mid to late 50s. You may be in a certain situation or know someone that, in, that is in that similar situation. Wouldn't you want to be able to decide what you're going to do with your life if it came to that point? So through my research, I have found that this um, has changed society um, with what it entitles. Well, through my research, I have found that this um, act has changed society just a bit with what it entitles. And um, by doing all this research, it makes me qualified to tell you about it. Now we're going to be discussing what physician assisted suicide is and how we can make a difference. Many people are worried about this topic because they don't understand um, how it's regulated and um, its process. So let's look into it. Physician assisted suicide is defined as the voluntary termination of one's own life by administration of lethal substance with the direct or indirect assistance of a physician, which I got from um, um, the definition of physician assisted suicide from MedNet. All right, so this is clearly a voluntary action, but it doesn't mean that it's not a thought out action either. There are a few states that actually allow for this um, medical option to happen, and those are as of April 5th, 2018, California, Colorado, the District of Columbia, Oregon, Vermont, and Washington, and now Hawaii um, as of January 1st, 2019. So these states deal with the dignity law that, in, um, that entails the rules and regulations that allow people to have physician's aid in dying. So for this to happen, there is quite a few things that need to be in place before you can even think of getting this um, in favor of you. So you one, have to be a state resident of any state that is going to allow this. Two, you have to be terminally ill with only a few months to live. Um, so once you have those two things down, which I hope that never happens to you, but once those two things are happening, you would need to talk to your doctor first and your family because you don't want this to be a surprise to them. It's not good if your family is not in it with you either because you need the support. Now, once you, when you're talking to your doctor, you're going to have to make one oral request for this first. Now, once you make that oral request, you're going to need a 15-day period between the second oral request. Um, one of the states, I want to say it's um, Oregon or Vermont, that you need 20 days instead of 15, but at least 15 days. Now, um, once you make your second oral request, you're going to need to write something out saying I want this and sign your name all the works now once you have that written request your doctor is going to take 48 hours to put that prescription in just for more time for you to think about it because it is a big life decision that you're making so once that request is made in you will ultimately be receiving that medication they cannot um they sorry they cannot um, do anything for you then once you receive that medication. And I got that um, from the site that has to do with the death with dignity. 
Now, one of the questions that I asked in the survey is how many people are okay with physician assistant suicide? 11 out of 13 students said that are, which surprised me because I didn't think a lot of you would be okay with this. Um, so this shows that you guys like are, could be indifferent about the topic based on what would happen, but a lot of you are okay with people choosing their fate and going along with this option. Now, a common misconception that many people make is thinking that euthanasia is physician assistance suicide, which it is not. Euthanasia is not allowed in the U.S. at all. So, as we know, assisted suicide is administered with a prescription drug, and the patient, um, not the physician, will ultimately administer the lethal methic medication. Euthanasia generally means that the physician would act directly, for instance, by giving the lethal injection to end a patient's life, which I found from um, a euthanasia website. Now, euthanasia is not allowed in the U.S., as I just said, due to it being out of the practitioner's judgment to um, physically inject the drug that causes a person to die. But why can we do that to animals? Like, when I... Sorry. When I asked a survey, 13 out of 14 students said that they're okay with putting an animal down. That is a good majority of the students that were asked that. But why is it so wrong for me people to make that decision themselves? I dwelled on this question for a bit. Why is it okay to put down an animal that has no say, but it's okay for but it's not okay for people to choose their fate when they're terminally ill? So when I asked this question to you guys, I got a lot of mixed responses. Some of you guys responded in the fashion of saying, people's lives should be valued higher than animals, therefore the death of a human being is much more delicate than the animals and should be saved if possible. Now, I totally agree with that, but it still, I don't, I don't know. It still doesn't work for me. Now, others said that society has led people to think that suicide is wrong and putting an animal down is for the animal's well-being to stop suffering. Now, a good majority of the time, that's true, but shelters will also put animals down. Each year, approximately 1.5 million sheltered animals are euthanized, which I found from um, an animal statistics website. This is mostly due to them being overcrowded. Overcrowded. Not for them being ill, but overcrowded. So, let me ask you again, what is the difference? Sometimes there is no difference. When a person is in pain and is on the verge of dying, they should have the choice to end their life while they can still be happy, just like an animal. Well, many people may not argue with this type of medical treatment, it should be allowed in a lot more states in the U.S. The last question I asked you in the survey was, do you think that physician-assisted suicide should be legalized in every state in the U.S.? Why or why not? 8 out of 14 of you, which may I say a lot of you were okay with this, but 8 out of 14 of you agreed that it should be legalized. One answer states that it should be legalized due to it not being an impulsive decision, and most states um, where it's legalized makes it a process where you have to see a psychologist and you have to declare it to a doctor on multiple occasions and sign a sign of paperwork, which I explained earlier. Now, the rest of you who, might I say, are confused because you did agree with it earlier. I don't know. I'm confused on this. But the rest of the class was either unsure or against legalization due to their beliefs thinking it's unethical, or just being unsure, which I totally understand. It's hard to think what side you're on when you don't have that much information about it. So these are all fine reasons, but I do think that those that don't know, don't know about the, like, the regulations that go into this. So let's go back to our sick patient that can't pay for their treatment. They're slowly deteriorating and feel in pain every single day. This pain is now making them angry and causing their family to avoid them. All good things that their friends thought of them is being blocked out by their bad behavior due to the pain that they're feeling. Now put yourself in those shoes. Would you rather have friends and family remember you for the good or for the bad that you have for the end of your life?
Is that what you want to be remembered by? Do you really want to live a life in pain for the next few months? Instead, you could be living a month or two happiness with your family instead of six months in pain and then die. Which, it's not like, I made it sound tragic. I didn't want that to sound like that. It needs to be taken with caution, but there's still, but there's still hope for this patient. The last issue this person needs in this state is to feel in pain and to feel unloved. So, we can help this person, but it may not be something that can be done overnight, like a lot of the issues that we're going to be presented in this next week. Citizens or students can be supportive, first of all, and try to urge states to allow this type of treatment. I'm going to go more into saying all the things that we could do regulation-wise, but this is just what I have so far. Now, physician-assisted suicide is something that many people will or can consider, but when a person when a person is in a dire situation, there are quite a few rules and regulations that a person needs to follow to be able to do this. It's a tough process, but is but people are able to do it. In the end, it's the person's decision if they want to end their life. The real question is, would you want to live in pain for the rest for the last few months of your life or be a vegetable? Don't you want to be remembered for all the good things that you did in your life and not for the heartache you have had in the past few months? We need to push for this law to be passed so people can make the decision as to what they want to do with their life if they're that ill. Thank you.